Hello and welcome to DAP Training. You are watching workshop number one of five through which we have decided to address the bullying phenomenon through dance activities and body expression. This workshop aims to introduce the project in its main actors, the participants along with the facilitator. Define what bullying is, create a group connection and highlight the role of the passive observer during a bullying situation bringing out the emotions and the feelings they experience in a situation of this kind, in order to analyze and deal with them. The facilitator should present the DAB project and the partners' organizations whilst announcing the content of the five workshops along with their aims. They should introduce the team members of the session as well as the volunteers and guests, if present in the room. They should ask for the definition of bullying among the participants and start a conversation about the phenomenon, making sure that by the end of it, everyone knows exactly what characteristics define bullying and the general prevention or intervention to tackle it, as well as our research connected to DAB, focused on expressive methods and particularly dance and body expression. This should take about 10 minutes. The facilitator should ask the youth workers about their experience in working with bullying and give one example from their daily work with young people in which they found this phenomenon. It should last about two minutes. Each youth worker should have approximately one minute to talk about their experience and one example. Each participant should receive three post-its on which they should write their expectations from the program, their possible fears and their possible contributions. The post-its should then be stuck on three pieces of paper and put on the wall. At the end of the program, after the fifth workshop, during the evaluation part, the participants will return to the wall to have access to their words and reflect on their journey. This should last about 10 minutes. When in a new group, when the participants do not know each other or the facilitator does not know the participants, it's important to start the session with an ice-breaking exercise to connect the participants all together and create a new energy among them as a group entity. The facilitator should invite the participants to walk around the room at their own pace. Gradually, the facilitator should invite them to connect with the space around them, inviting them to pay attention to the colours they see within the room, leaving them enough time to do so. Then the biggest things within the room and the smallest, then the spaces of lightness and darkness, and invite them to reach those spaces, spending a few seconds in them, feeling the energy of those specific spaces. They could close their eyes for a few seconds when they reach them to help the feeling. Now the facilitator should ask the participants to connect also with the people around the room through eye contact and spend a moment walking around the room finding those connections, alternating with people and things that are present at the same time in the same space. At the facilitator's signal, the participants should connect only with the people around them and concentrate on their physical journey, the path they take in the room and interact with it. They could follow someone or turn around someone else or interact with someone far away, connecting with their dynamics. They could accelerate to reach someone or decelerate to catch someone else's path. The participants should play among themselves, crossing their paths, going backwards, forwards, turning around, following, escaping from someone in a playful way. The facilitator should guide the dynamics of the walk that could go in a very fast speed, almost running, uh, to a run, to a slow motion, to encourage the participants' creativity. To implement the playfulness, the facilitator should also encourage the participants to keep the same task going down to the floor, cr crawling, rolling, avoiding standing up for at least two minutes, and then at the end they should invite the participants to go back to a standing position, finding their walking pace again and slowly, gradually, pick a place in the room where to find stillness, close their eyes and concentrate on their breaths, looking at themselves from the inside.
Now the facilitator should ask the participants to split into groups of three. One person, A, should start standing on their feet and will have the role of following the energy induced by their two partners. The two partners should play with A by pushing the energy towards them or pulling the energy from them. A should follow the two partners' movements, letting their body respond to their energy. The two partners could, for instance, pull the energy from A's head and bring it to the floor, or push the energy into A's chest, or pull the energy from A's left foot up to the ceiling, and so on. The two partners should at first start one by one, alternating the actions, and as they get comfortable, they should push or pull the energy at the same time, and A should play with it. At the facilitator's signal, they should exchange roles. Everyone should experience A's role. Each A person should spend one or two minutes in their role. So it will last for a total of around six minutes. Now the participants should be ready to work in a new, neutral and more connected atmosphere. The facilitator should invite the participants to find a place in the space, lie down on the floor, find a comfortable position and close their eyes. The facilitator should ask them to imagine a place where they feel at ease, where they feel good and comfortable, and go there with their imagination. When they find that place, they should enjoy for a few seconds that feeling of being secure and comfortable. At the facilitator's signal, they should imagine a door and when they see it, they go towards it and open it. Behind the door, they will see a bullying scene where they take on the role of the passive observer, observing the bullying scene, doing nothing. They should take time to watch and analyze the feelings they are having in that present moment. The scene they are watching could be a scene that they have lived in their lives in that passive observer role or a scene of a movie, uh, also a scene that they are imagining. They should take time to soak up the emotions. At the facilitator's signal, they should go back to the comfortable place they have chosen and close the door behind them, spending a few seconds in that space. Next, the facilitator should ask the participants to come back to the room by feeling the contact with the floor, the temperature of it, touching the floor with their hands, opening their eyes and connecting with the space around them. When ready, they should roll onto one side and resume a standing position before going into a circle with the facilitator for the debriefing. Time for a discussion uh, during which the participants and the facilitator should identify the most common emotions experienced while in the passive observer position. By the end of the discussion, the facilitator should lead the discussion to point out and name three specific emotions. At the end, the facilitator should summarize and conclude that all the actors involved in a bullying situation are feeling predominantly the same and the main three emotions, which are fear, anger, and helplessness. The facilitator should now ask the participants to reflect on what action they could do to stop these feelings and get out of a bullying situation. When they find that action, they should name the emotion they feel if they get out of the bullying situation, and they should agree on one common emotion. The facilitator should write down that positive emotion with the other negative ones. Another topic that should be put forward is that there are no good or bad emotions, but just emotions, and each of them has an important role in our functioning. The facilitator should now walk in the space and invite everyone to join them walking in the space with the music on. The facilitator should pick one of the emotions previously mentioned and say it out loud, 
and the participants, along with the facilitator, to encourage everyone's participation, should move or dance representing or feeling that emotion that's been said for about two minutes. The facilitator should gradually name each of the four emotions identified and should change music for each emotion according to the provided playlist, helping the participants' creativity with the sound atmosphere. Important, the facilitator should specify during each emotion that has been named to dance the emotion out to avoid keeping the emotion in mind and inside. Therefore, once they identify the named emotion, the participants should dance that emotion out of their body and when it's time to go to the following emotion, the facilitator should insist saying, we leave that emotion out of us and behind us. Five minutes for explaining the task and people to move around the space, getting used to the movement. Two minutes per emotion with the specific music. We need to listen to the music at least from 30 seconds to one minute to get in the emotional state proposed by the music to then explore the movement while feeling that emotion. The facilitator should underline the concept of the connection among mind, emotions, body and its impact on our behaviour. The facilitator should now ask the participants to work in pairs, A and B. A should now take the facilitator's role of the previous exercise. They should pronounce the emotions previously analysed and embodied by all the participants to B. A should pick one emotion and name it to B, leaving them enough time to create two movements related to that specific emotion and memorise the two movements before going to the next emotion. When B has memorised the two movements, A should name the following emotion and B should take time to create another two movements related to this different emotion and so on. By the end of this activity, B should have memorised two movements per emotion, eight in total. The movement could be as simple as raising one hand or turning the head to the left, etc. And as complicated as the participants decide, depending on their memory abilities. A and B exchange roles, another 10 minutes. Once all participants have their own eight movements created by themselves, they should compose those eight movements in whichever order they want to create a choreography and teach it to their partner. They can directly compose their choreography on their partners if they wish, or they can take time to create on their own before teaching their choreography to their partner. Time for showing, 10 minutes. The first group, formed by the participants who had the A role at first, should spread out in the room, find their place, and show all together the choreography taught by B. When they reach their chosen space, they should concentrate for a few seconds before starting the choreography. They should repeat the choreography two times and when they reach their last position, they should wait in that position for everyone to finish their choreography. Find their last position, wait a few seconds of stillness altogether and leave the space together as a group. When the first group finishes, it's time for the second group to show their partner's choreography. Time for showing, 10 minutes. The participants should start by bouncing on their feet, still keeping their toes on the floor, not jumping. Releasing the shoulders, arms and hands with no control, allowing them to go wherever they want, following the bouncing movement. They should now stop bouncing and they should start rubbing their hands as fast as they can to create heat on their palms. At the facilitator's signal, they should put their warm hands over their face, feeling the heat just created, and they, sh they should take off their hands as the heat goes away from their palms. They should rub their hands again and repeat the experience, putting their hand on their chest, and the third time on their lower back. 
Now the facilitator should ask the participants to rub their hands on their body as if they were having a shower, starting from the head, finishing with the feet, going through the whole body with an active movement of rubbing, quite fast speed. They should insist on a motion that washes out all the negative emotions felt during the day. They should now go back into bouncing, liberating their shoulders, arms and hands again. However, this time they should pronounce the vowel A ah, or A and keep the A ah as long as their breath allows them. They will repeat it four times. At first they should keep the A ah quiet. The second time they repeat it, they should go louder. The third time, even louder. And the fourth and last time, the loudest they can. The facilitator should connect the vowel to the negative emotions they have felt and let them out through their voice. Now the participants are ready for the conclusions of the day. At the facilitator's signal, with a change of music, everyone should walk in the space to occupy the whole room, moving around, re-establishing visual connections with the others, exploring again their surroundings. At the facilitator's signal, the participants should pick up a sheet of paper with a colour uh, pencil or felt tip pen and continue walking around. When the music goes down, everyone should choose a place in the space and draw their silhouette colouring the body parts they moved the most and in which they felt an emotional engagement. Everyone should then write a key word of the session on the same paper. Everyone should place their drawings as in an art exhibition, all together, and they should admire their artwork, discussing their experience amongst each other. This should take about 20 minutes. Thank you very much for watching our video. If you are interested in this topic and you want to go further to discover our process, watch our next video.